Hi, today we're going to talk about liposuction. Liposuction is a very commonly performed procedure throughout America, and I think it's important to make sure that your doctor is certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery. Me being a board certified plastic surgeon, I am very familiar with what it takes to train to become a plastic surgeon, and although there are other doctors who perform plastic surgery procedures, I think board certification in plastic surgery is one of those things that's a uh, point of safety for you as a patient. Next, liposuction is not a way to lose weight. It is not a weight loss tool. It is a contouring tool. So I wanted to show you what one pound of fat looks like. This is a pound of fat. This is the amount of fat I have to remove from a patient just so they take off one pound off their weight. And this is a model of five pounds of fat. So there's a significant amount of fat to be removed if you are losing about five pounds off your body. That's why I think it's important to make the distinguishment of uh, liposuction not being a way to lose weight. It is a way to change the contours of your body in the sense that I can take an area of bigger pinch, like let's say your lower belly, and turn it into a safety pinch that like, let's say that it's above your ribs and your, this area pinches, you know, about an inch, half inch, but your belly pinches about three. So liposuction changes this three inch pinch into something about a half inch or an inch in pinch on your body. That's why it's really a body contouring tool, but not a way to lose weight. When a patient comes in for an evaluation for liposuction, the thing that I feel is most important is to take a look at the area that the patient is considering treating. Like let's say that it's your neck. I want to pinch the area, I want to see the quality of the skin, and I want to compare it to a safety zone in the region. Like let's say right here over the platysma, this area pinches about this much, but yet underneath my neck pinches closer to an inch. So I'm looking at what is the safety margin that I have. So what I'm looking for is areas of safety. I'm trying to look at an area on your body that has a thickened area that you don't like and turn it into a safety margin, such as this area over the platysma. So at the end of liposuction, this pinch and this pinch are equal. Same thing goes for your belly. I'll pinch an area like directly in the lower part of your belly and I'll look for a safety margin. Uh, like for me, it's over my rib cage. Over the ribs, my pinch is about that much, whereas over my belly, it's about three inches. So at the end of liposuction, I'm looking for the uh, pinch in my lower belly to match the pinch over my ribs. And that's what I call a safety pinch, and, and that's what I'm doing during the first part of, it, of an evaluation of liposuction. I'm also looking at the skin quality, I'm looking for stretch marks, I'm looking for prior scars, things that would sort of detract from the ultimate outcome. But I do think that uh, the part about having a uh, safety pinch is critical because you want to make sure that you leave behind a certain amount of fat underneath your skin. You don't want to take something that's pleasantly plump and then leave it loose and wrinkly. So that's what I'm looking for during the evaluation. Okay, now that we're going to talk about the procedure of liposuction, I think it's important to figure out, are we going to do this procedure with the patient awake or with the patient asleep with anesthesia? And I base that decision with the patient on the size of the treatment area. If the patient has small areas, about the size of a hand, I recommend doing that procedure awake. I think I can adequately numb you, get you comfortable very quickly without torturing a patient and uh, making the procedure kind of an unpleasant experience. If it's over the size of a hand or a couple palms, then I recommend doing the procedure with anesthesia. It'll be more pleasant, more you'll go to sleep and then you'll quickly wake up after the procedure with the procedure being done. I feel like making sure that the procedure isn't linked to a bad experience makes it kind of like a pleasant thing to do for yourself, a little bit of a gift to yourself to contour your body. Then uh, I have to work with you to figure out what type of procedure you're looking for. Because there are various ways to do liposuction, and I think the most common way is to do traditional liposuction, and that is to make small punctures in the body, add fluid to the area to make the procedure safe, and then suction the fat out with the fluid. The procedure is done with an instrument like this called a cannula that is connected to a tube that has suction in it. And what we're doing is we are suctioning the fat and trying to leave behind a safety amount of fat underneath the skin, that safety pinch that we talked about. 
Now, there are various ways to do liposuction, and I think the way that we have evolved over time is to do liposuction with a technique called safe liposuction. So we do the same procedure. We sort of inject fluid to numb up the area and make liposuction safe. And then we sort of almost create pathways for ourselves with a slightly different instrument. And then we suction the fat out and then after we're done, we take that same instrument to sort of, sort of almost clean up the fat and make it a little bit more even of the amount of fat that we're leaving behind on your skin. And that technique, kind of like three, four steps, is what we call safe liposuction. It was developed by a, uh, a plastic surgeon who was uh, trying to make sure that the outcome was producing safe and almost reliable outcomes. Now, in this day and age, people are very interested in how to three-dimensionally contour their body. And that is actually kind of an important concept. When I do liposuction, I'm literally trying to sculpt the outcome. I'm not just trying to reduce the pinch, I'm trying to reduce it so in the end, you look like a very contoured uh, patient. So I do a little bit uh, more aggressive liposuction on the sides and, and like an area like the belly. But in the center part, I'll leave it a little, just a little bit more thick so that it looks like you are very, very toned. And I'll purposely catch certain lines inside your belly so that you have a very toned outcome. It's called three-dimensional contouring of your body. Once that's done, then I think about what does the skin look like? If the patient has loose skin, then I'll add an energy component to the procedure in areas like the neck and I, that I want to do the most aggressive energy, I'll usually turn on a laser and do laser liposuction to tighten the skin as much as I can after the fat has been removed. In other parts of the body, like the inner thigh or the belly, I'll turn on a different energy device that might have radio frequency in it that uh, tightens or uh, heats the skin to a certain temperature and then stops. And that creates a very safe outcome for the patient that we are not heating it to an unknown temperature and then hoping it's going to be okay. We're treating it to a very uh, specific temperature, fully knowing that this is going to be a very safe number, uh, safe temperature during the procedure. One of the things that I think also helps is making sure that the punctures that I use are not conspicuous. I want to hide those little punctures below uh, your belt line or in a place that nobody sees, like in a vertical point inside your belly button. So I'm purposely hiding these punctures so nobody sees them. I have seen multiple patients over the years with liposuction um, incisions way larger than they need to be in very conspicuous places. So I think you have to talk to your doctor about that to make sure that the punctures that uh, are placed are in uh, places that are very acceptable to you. Most of, the, most of these little incisions, these little punctures are very small, but you also want to make sure that they're small and that they hide well. So in areas like the belly, I'll frequently use something well below the belt line. An occasional patient needs something uh, in the belly button area. And on the back, same thing. I'm doing very, very small punctures just above your buttocks. And that's usually the only ones I need and an occasional one in your bra line. Okay, so that's the procedure itself. Okay, we're gonna talk about the recovery from liposuction. I think it's important to realize that no matter what you do to the human body, healing is about a six week event. So as we put in that last little stitch after your liposuction procedure, although you may feel fine in a few days to a week, the human body is still healing for about six weeks. So you do have to be careful with yourself for that first six weeks. The first day or two, however, you don't really have a lot of discomfort, but you are leaking from the area that we made the puncture, that fluid that we use during liposuction to make liposuction safe, is slowly leaking out through your puncture. Your body's absorbing it or leaking out through the puncture. So you do want to make sure that you're careful with yourself for those first 48 hours. And I usually have patients get in the shower either the next day or at 48 hours for sure and to wash everything off. And then I'll usually have you wear your compression wear. I don't want you to wear anything too tight while you're healing because you're usually numb for the first few hours. And you don't want to wear anything tight and you're numb and you're not fully awake yet. So during the first you know, few hours after the procedure, just be careful. And then if I sent you home with a compression garment, just make sure that if it feels tight, you take it off for a little bit. 
give yourself a break, you can always put it back on. I'm always looking to make sure that the patient doesn't produce any trauma to their skin on an area that we just operated on, that the compression garment itself is just squeezing too tight, acting like a tourniquet to your skin. So that's why you want to make sure that you're fully awake, that your uh, area is a little bit less numb than it was for right after the procedure, and then go ahead and put on your compression garment. And if I've sent you home with a compression garment, you make sure you take breaks, like jump in the shower, take a break from the compression garment, and then put, it, put a fresh compression garment back on. Now, the usual uh, rule of thumb for me is that for the first week or two after uh, the, any procedure, just be careful with your activity, and you can slowly increase your activities after one to two weeks. The compression wear itself is frequently talked about in a, in a rule of threes. You want to wear it 24-7 for about the first three weeks, and you can start backing off from uh, wearing it all the time to maybe just wearing it during active times and at, at night, so you're kind of squeezing the fluid out. Um, but I do think that the ultimate contours from liposuction happen in about three to six months, and remember that just during the first few weeks, you're still swollen, you're squeezing the fluid out, and then over the course of time, about three months, you start really seeing the outcome. And then by for sure about three to six months, then you can kind of see uh, the ultimate uh, result of your liposuction procedure.